Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's Tuesday. And of course, as everyone knows, if you're on Facebook or on Instagram or any of those other social media, it's election day. So don't forget to go and vote today, please. Uh, that's enough of that because uh, we're bring, we're all hearing too much about it, aren't we? Um, but it's Tuesday. It's November 3rd. Um, and I apologize. I'm a little late starting up today, but I'm having trouble with my computer. It's it uh, decided to have some issues last night and this morning it's even more issues so i think i might be having to run this one to the uh, computer repair shop that's never a fun thing so anyway um today we are going to continue working our way through luke but we've made a transition this morning we've gotten into chapter 10 praise be um so today we're, we we come, come up into a block of scripture that again these are some difficult scriptures, uh, some that make us scratch our head and go, hmm, and, and wonder. Um, and I've got, you know, had, had two choices. I could, about how much of this to bite off. Um, really, we could have easily taken us the the, 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 the chunk from, from verse 1 to 16. And that's usually, you know, when a person preaches over this. I think that's probably generally the, the chunk you bite off. Um, but I decided to break it in two. Um, for this devotion because it didn't, I didn't want to be on here for 25 minutes or 30 minutes to talking about um, this. Um, not that I would, but, but it could. Um, so let's take a look at um, chapter 10, verses 1 to 9 this morning. We'll look at 10 to 16 tomorrow. And guess what? That's really the harder stuff. Uh, that's the more difficult to deal with. But let's bear in mind as we look at this what we talked about yesterday because, you know, we tend to jump into scripture and we take bites here, bites there. And we always have to remember that, you know, I'm trying to do that during this devotion. Maybe I'm not accomplishing it, but backing up every so often and trying to bring what we've already talked about forward a little bit um, into what we're dealing with. But remember yesterday, uh, Jesus was talking to the would-be followers, those that would follow him. Um, that, you know, the fellow came and, and uh, said that he wanted to follow him wherever he went. And Jesus said that foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay, lay his head. Meaning following Jesus is difficult because you don't fit in sometimes, or rarely. Um, and sometimes you have to answer the call. We talked about that. Um, and then again, he told them to let the dead bury the dead. And uh, that seemed harsh. And then also, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And so all those difficult things. And like, whoa, we were, you know, we were kind of wanting to follow you. Um, and then all these, dip, you know, you're making it not so attractive, Jesus. Um, and then what's he do in chapter 10? We, we jump right into the very next verse. After this, he says, the Lord appointed 70. Um, so let's jump into chapter uh, 10, verses 1 to 9, and uh, realize what I just talked about. And then he's following it up immediately with this. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in, in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, Whatever they provide for the laborer deserves whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. All right, that's where we're gonna to end today. That's chapter nine, or verse nine and chapter ten. Um and we'll go on from there tomorrow. Um, first of all, he appoints 70 this time. Remember, it wasn't long ago we had the 12 apostles were sent out, the, the, you know, the core guys, um, the, big, the big dogs, so to say. And they were sent out, and then they came back. And, uh, but now he's sending out 70. And now some of your trans, some of your Bibles may say 72 um, there, and don't get, don't, don't get flustered by that. Um, some manuscripts say 72. I suspect that it truly and honestly, what, you know, the original version, and that's why the NRSV, I believe, and so many others use 70, because it most likely was 70 was the number. I'm not sure how that 72 got in there. Um, but 70 is, a, is an important number. Um, you know, numbers mean things in Scripture, okay? Uh, we have to be careful so we don't 
sometimes interpret them necessarily literally uh, because that's not the idea necessarily always. Sometimes it's an idea that it's a lot or it's a long time or, or, or what have you. Um, and, and sometimes it means that it's reiterating uh, it's, it's, it's going mm -hmm. back into scripture and it's reiterating something and it's reinforcing something and it's remember this so he's sending out 70 and 70 of course um, it could mean a number of things um, from, from the time of Luke uh, first of all that would be the number of elders if you remember back in, in Moses um, that Moses chose to help him to lead the Israelites out in the wilderness so he had picked out 70 elders so 70 was an important number for, for for the Jews, um, it's also the members of the, it's the number of people, the members of the Sanhedrin, the leadership. So, seventy is is a is a number of leadership. Okay, um, but it's also here has another meaning, a separate meaning, I think, that that it personally really enforce, reinforces to me why I think it really was seventy to begin with, is because seventy. Um, at the time of, of Luke's writing, was believed to be the number of all the nations of the earth. That there were 70 nations, that known nations. Um, and so what he's saying here, he's appointing 70 others and sending them out, of course, in pairs, but he said, but they are representing all the nations of the earth. And so, so there's a double meaning there, I think. Their leadership, all the nations of the earth. Um, so I, I, that, that, I think there is some symbolism there and there is some importance there that we need to, to, to be cognizant of. Um, he sent him on pairs, though, and that's that's also something interesting. Um, we do need each other when we're going out and doing ministry, when we're going out and, and preaching the word. We need others to 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 help us, to reinforce us, to so that when we are feeling down, someone else is there to help to help us up and to, to encourage us. Um, so it's that fellowship, that idea of working together, that, that we're not lone wolves, okay, so to say. In this, in this, um, too often we, we we've got kind of perhaps wandered away from that in some ways and oftentimes we do out, go out and do ministry um, preaching to others or, or evangelizing to others I guess sharing with others um, and on a solo basis um, sometimes it's it's difficult not to be all by yourself um, but I think the biblical model is more that we at least uh, an extension of it that we lean back on one another that we're there to support and to aid and to help each other that it's not about us being just out there as loners so um, then he talks about the harvest being plentiful, um, that the laborers are few. Well, wonder why the laborers are few when you put all those other restrictions we just talked about at the end of nine on there. Um, but that is a verse that we really today, um, maybe should give us some pause. You know, we often lament about how, you know, the, the pews are, are thinning out across the nation. It's not just one individual church that the pews are thinning out and, and fewer and fewer people of certain demographics are coming to church and whatnot. Um, but when we read that, we're, we're reminded the harvest is, is plentiful. There's people out there that need to hear the word. People out there that, that if, if they hear the word, they're willing to respond to the word and they're, they're, they're able to, this, if we truly implement the Holy Spirit in our, in, in our sharing, um, they're there. It's just that we don't have enough of us out there doing the work. Uh, too many of us are not all in, as they say. You know, we like last last yesterday we talked about the, uh, you know, the being fully committed. Um, too many are sitting on the sidelines and watching and not not working. Uh, we need more. We need more workers. We need more to join that seventy. Um, it says, go out on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. That's difficult. That's scary, isn't it? it but it tells us and it reminds us that you know, on top of all these other things that we talk about, let the dead bury their dead and all of that, um, they're talking about that, that it's not an easy task going out and sharing the word. Uh, you're going to get attacked. And it was that way in Jesus' time. Why would it be different now? It's not. Um, so we, we need to be aware of that. Um, go on your way, see how you stand out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Now that greet no one on the road seems harsh to us, but it means you need to be focused on the task. You need to know what the task is and focused on the task of sharing the, the, the word of God. That doesn't mean that you don't talk to the people that you encounter on the you know, encounter in life. No, that it's about don't get don't lose your focus. Stay focused on on this thing. Um, and then he goes on and talks about uh, 
remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for their labor, deserves to be paid, but don't move around. And so it's like wherever situation you find yourself in, stay focused on doing the work in that situation. It's not about moving around trying to find where you're more the situation that's more advantageous to you personally. It's about the advantage to the word, right? It's the advantage to God. It's what's more advantageous to to the mission, not about what's more advantageous to you personally. Um, that we need to always remember. Um, one of the other things that I want to back up and about the the seventy, he says he's sending them out to wherever he's um, planning to go. Um, the, to every town and place where he himself intended to go, um, makes you almost think that these are, this is a reconnaissance group. These these guys are scouting. They're going out and finding which villages are receptive to for Jesus to go, the most the, the most advantageous place for him to be uh, for the spreading the word, the gospel. Um, so that makes me wonder what you know. It, you know, we we know when he got to Jerusalem, he had all the things lined up with the with the the colt and all of that, um, and even a place to stay for the. Uh, you know, for the Last Supper and all of those things. So I wonder, are these, are these guys the scouting party that went out ahead? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure that they were out that long because it's not going to be but a couple days and we're going to have them coming back. Uh, so I'm not sure they were out long enough to truly scout the old way to Jerusalem uh, from where he's at. Um, but there's that still remains there. And maybe when they say they come back, maybe they didn't all come back. Maybe it's just a portion of them. Maybe some of them are still out there further ahead in those villages that are down the road further. So... Um, I guess the message there would be we, we really do have to try to, we, we work in the Spirit, uh, but we need to be prepared that the Spirit might put us in a place where we have to work for a long time, and we don't know when He's going to come. We just have to stay there and be diligent in our working. So with that, I'm going to let you go. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the rest of the story, and it'll get a little bit wilder from there. So have a very blessed day. Enjoy this day. The weather is going to be Fabulous, it looks like. Looks like it might even hit 70 here in Lake City, which, uh, wow, for you know, the 3rd of November, that's pretty cool. Pretty warm, anyway, rather. So pray for me and my computer, though, because I, I may be running to Carol this afternoon. Have a blessed day, and as always, be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.